50 years ago, a dream to open the first four-year college in Bakersfield, California turned reality, changing a once agricultural field into the thriving campus today. Since its beginning, CCB has grown tremendously, shaping and influencing people, academia, and opportunities for students. Hi, I'm Donato Cruz, and I'm with the Historical Research Center at CCB. What follows is a short documentary that captures the essence of CCB's 50 years and highlights a newly released CCB 50th anniversary book, Rising. We hope you enjoy the program. Okay, so my name is Olivia Garcia, and I am a um, professor of history at Bakersfield College, and I also am a lecturer at CSUB in communications, and of course I'm excited to be one of the authors of the book Celebrating 50 Years of California State University Bakersfield History. So why is the CSUB anniversary book so important to Kern County history? You know, historically, when we think about Kern County history, we often think about its richness in oil and agriculture, that we tend to overlook its history in higher education. On August 22, 1952, the city of Bakersfield was struck by an earthquake. By 1956, new buildings were already visible. The urban landscape was shifting to East Bakersfield and the southwest part of town. The Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce rebranded the city as America's newest city, Bakersfield, and branded Kern County the land of magic. With a new program, the Chamber of Commerce championed new tourism, homes, industry, and higher education. The Chamber of Commerce Education Committee recommended the establishment of a higher education institution. The committee stated, quote, Kern County, with a population of 301,000, is believed to be the largest population center in the state of California without easy access to an institution of higher learning. The distance from Bakersfield in any direction to an institution of higher learning is more than 100 miles, end quote. And it's so significant because the establishment of California State University Bakersfield was so, so closely tied to the master plan for higher education in California. So statewide, as they were looking at trying to create a uniform system that merged the UCs, the CSUs, and community colleges, Cal State Bakersfield was born of that. Our story of, of higher education is so important and relevant into understanding not only Kern County, but also the statewide influence there's, there were two individuals who played a very significant role. Um, you have Dorothy Donahoe and you had Walter Stern, both elected officials that played a pivotal role at that level. They were two of my most favorite people to look into when it came to this story. Um, you had, you know, Dorothy Donahoe, who was an assemblywoman, one of the very few women we're talking about the state legislature. Assemblywoman Dorothy Donahoe paved the way to higher education in the late 1950s. Donahoe was a champion for education access. She ran for assembly in a newly formed district in 1952 and easily won. In 1958, she won Los Angeles Times Woman of the Year Award, recognizing her role in California legislation and her efforts to increase university enrollment. So I, you know, I loved hearing her story, understanding who she was and how she rallied behind reforming higher education. And people loved her. I mean, she didn't even think she could run for office and be selected, but here she was, you know, with this idea that maybe she could run for office and people rallied behind her because she was so genuine and committed and pure. And I think higher education for her meant a lot. And maybe it was part of her leaving her legacy, her mark. Maybe, you know, even though she didn't have a higher education, she understood its potential and what it meant for Kern County. California State College Bakersfield named a hall after her, recognizing her authorship of the Donahoe Higher Education Act of 1960, which established the Board of Trustees of the California State Colleges. Higher education was to become a reality in the 1960s. In 1959, Dorothy Donahoe offered a resolution to reorganize the California higher education system to guarantee access to higher education. 
the resolution asked the UC Regents and the State Board of Education to prepare a master plan to develop and expand curriculum, standards, and integrate facilities and gave them 10 years to meet the needs of the state. And then of course you had, of course, Walter Stern or Senator Stern, who was a guy who had served in, in the war, who also had um, run a longtime veterinarian hospital. And you know, the funny thing is that those two become really good friends over time. Um, and they, their life isn't just weaved by coming together through this master plan, or which becomes known as the Donahoe Act of 1960. It's much more bigger than that. You know, it's a bond that's full forged over time. In 1958, Walter Stern was elected to the California State Senate for District 34. He initially served on the Agriculture and Education Committees. In his early years, he was a supporter of Assemblywoman Dorothy Donahoe's Higher Education Act and helped sponsor the legislation. The legislation eventually established the UC, CSU, and the California Community College system. In 1965, Walter Stern authored and proposed Senate Bill 75 and created a California State College in Kern County. The bill established what would later become California State College Bakersfield and subsequently California State University Bakersfield. After much planning, a location for the campus was made possible with a land donation from the Kern County Land Company. So ultimately we see that the Kern County Land Company is the one that's selected, but it's not without controversy over over many different groups really wanting to be the place and you know it makes you wonder. What would have been, you know, if it would have been near Lake Mead, or if it would have been the mouth of the county, or California City, you know, it's, it's really interesting and, you know, thinking about how they, so they were careful in the decision they made. Stern talks about that he was really happy about it because it's, he almost saw the vision. He almost saw the future, like that made sense. Having it in the Stockdale area location was the place it needed to be, where other people said, like, no one goes there, no one shops there, it's not, it's on the middle of, of nowhere, it needs to be over here. And, and lo and behold, so I love talking about that because you get inside the different characters and people who are passionate about the future, and it ties with building and, you know, and, and still something we still see today as they plan for development. The donation was finalized in 1968. The donation took into consideration Bakersfield's population growth and the 1965 establishment of West High School. The southwest side of the city was suggested to be the best location for the campus and it was referred to early on as the Stockdale site. California State College Bakersfield began construction in 1969 and opened in 1970. It became one of the shortest times that the state had opened a college. According to the Bakersfield California in 1965, the campus had two unique features, the academic village and a mall type development. There were many surprises um, in the research, but I think one that really stood out to me were the presidents and their personalities and the characters. I mean, from the very beginning, we have our very first president. He's considered the father of the university. You know, we're, you know, we're talking about, you know, president um, Dr. Paul Romberg, you know, he was a, you know, World War II uh, veteran and also um, incredibly intelligent, very innovative, and he was much loved. I mean, the guy was adored and respected by many. And here he comes to Bakersfield and he comes with this vision that he wants to create a university that follows like this academic village concept, right? That it's kind of more of like this Socratic style seminars that connects, you know, uh, faculty and students on a much deeper level. I mean, there was one faculty member that was holding his office meetings and he took out the chairs and he put a bunch of pillows, you know? So we're talking about this kind of level where, you know, they, they stayed on campus and they connected and, you know, he had this big dream and vision and, uh, we do see some of that fruits of labor in the very early points of the college. Dr. Paul F. Romberg was the founding president. He arrived in Bakersfield in September of 1967, working out of the temporary offices of California Avenue. He and his planning team oversaw the construction of the campus, developed programs, ordered books, and hired faculty. 
for elected leaders, educators, and residents, it was time to transform the 375 acres of land whose fertile soil had nourished sugar beets, cotton, potatoes, and forage for cattle grazing. It was time to harvest something bigger and something with longer lifespan. So the field of dreams took root. CSB opened officially in October 1st, 1970. Initially, the university began as a small liberal arts college and only offered social studies, English, and history, but made plans to offer and expand programs in philosophy, religious studies, and foreign languages. Hi, Javier. Can you tell us your name and about your research on CSUB sports? Well, my name is Francisco Javier Llamas. Well, uh, one thing is I, I, I'm a major sports fan, so I do love sports. So this was this something, this something I do anyways. Other stuff that I can point out, basketball and its origins. You know, uh, they, again, no facilities, as I mentioned. So the, the first teams, and I put in quotations, the first teams were students versus faculty staff. And they, their first games were against, I believe, Shafter and Highland. Uh, and they lost both games to the high school teams. But it's, it's important to know that they've never practiced at least maybe once beforehand. And they didn't have a coach for the first game. So this is the origins of, of, of CSUB basketball. When you look at it now, how it is the sort of the premier sport, the one that gathers all the attention, not undermining the other sports, but that's the one that catches a lot of attention with their 1990s run. And of course, in 2016 in, uh, in Las Vegas with the NCAA bidding, you know, the first time with Coach Barnes. Dr. Jacob Frankel was appointed president of CSB in 1974. In 1978, the math, arts, and sciences schools were combined into one school of arts and sciences. An effort to reduce administrators to departments were consolidated. With faculty on happiness, the academic council was replaced in 1983, and Frankel retired in the spring of 1983. In 1985, Frankel was interviewed where he spoke about his new passions which included acting. And you would think that, you know, hey, I've been president, I'm gonna resign, I'm done, and no, he goes into Hollywood. Here's someone in his 60s who goes to LA and, you know, participates in acts in these different films. Frankel did have a minor six minute feature where he played the role of a professor in a 1986 horror movie. His last film was in a pseudo documentary in 2010. In 1983, Dr. Tomas Arciniega was announced as CSB's third president. He was very careful in how he carried himself, but one thing that he was very clear about that everyone knew was opening the door and having more access to students of color. He, won, he was a champion for students, underrepresented students, especially Latino. He made it very clear he was about that, and he really pushed back and challenged, what can we do? What else can we do? What outreach efforts can we do to bring in more? And you had a situation where he is also runs into some tension um, with some faculty because the concern was, we understand there is a need, we have to attract more, but we can't just open the door to everybody. There still has to be a process. There still has to be requirements being met. But at the same time, he felt that that could be accomplished, but there needs to be a lot more legwork that needs to be doing to make sure. And you do see that he was about action because when he began, there was about 3,000 students. And once he left, you had um, about 7,000 students. So you did see where he was trying to come. And, you know, I often wonder, I didn't have it in my research, and that's a big question I have, is whether he was also a first generation, because first generation was very important to him. In 1985, CSP was the only college not granted university status. To become a university, the college needed to increase enrollment of full-time students, graduate students, faculty, and offer a minimum amount of nationally accredited degree programs. In the fall of 1986, with the work to achieve university status, faculty and administrators described CSB as overcrowded after seeing record enrollment rates. With the rise of enrollment and the drafting of new graduate and undergraduate programs, CSB achieved university status in 1988. 1990, CSUB began offering extension classes in Lancaster, California. This was exciting news. 
My name is Julie Plata. My research focuses specifically on the CSUB Antelope Valley campus and it's personal because of the fact that I was a student there. What are some of those interesting details that you discovered during your research? Well, the one thing that I did not know is that it originally started as a campus to serve the needs of the community's teacher shortage. So CSUB saw that they needed to get some teacher training going and it was a very small campus that shared a classroom at Antelope Valley College, which is the local community college, and there were only about 25 students when it first started. One of the other surprises I ran into while I was researching this is that I had a job as a student assistant on campus there for a couple of years and we kept a scrapbook. And I relied on that scrapbook to put together a lot of the stories that are within my chapter. And as I'm looking at the newspaper articles and the dates that are written, I'm going, oh, this writing looks familiar and didn't realize that it was my own writing. And I had had a part in putting together my research years before even knowing that I was going to be writing a chapter on that campus. Dr. Horace Mitchell became the fourth president of California State University Bakersfield in July 2004 after 36 years of experience in higher education. Under Dr. Mitchell's leadership, the university entered a period of rapid development with a vision to extend the excellence and diversity of the faculty and academic programs. Mitchell witnessed building and expansion, including the opening of the Science III building in 2008, in 2009, the modernized 75 and 130,000 square foot student recreation center opened on campus. Another addition was a visual arts center, which opened in 2014. Projects Mitchell left unfinished are now in the hands of the fifth president, Dr. Lynette Zelesny. Among them are the Energy and Engineering Innovation Center and the new Student Union and Aquatic Center. She succeeded Dr. Horace Mitchell, who retired from the university at the end of the 2017-2018 academic year. As a product of the CSU, Dr. Selesny earned her bachelor's degrees and master's degrees in psychology from Humboldt State University and a PhD in applied social psychology from Claremont Graduate University and an MBA with distinctions from the Craig School of Business at Fresno State. For 50 years, CSUB has been gifted with students who are inspirational in so many ways. Since its birth, the 375-acre campus has grown tremendously, filling up more than half of its acreage and becoming the leading institution in the southern San Joaquin Valley. Why should students pick up this book? I think that it is important for students to pick up this book so that they learn about the university that they are a part of. CSUB is going to help shape their future and they are going to become a part of the CSUB legacy. Enjoy your time at CSUB. It goes by so fast. Always cherish the education that you get at CSUB. Uh, as an alumni, I am so grateful for everything that I learned from my professors. As a parent of an alumni, I am so proud of what lessons my daughter learned from the fantastic faculty and staff that she encountered at CSUB. As an alumni, do you have any advice for future or continuing students? As an alumni from CSUB, as I mentioned, I, I have a lot of gratitude to CSU Bakersfield for the opportunities, not only as a student and a student worker, but as a staff and, and as a lecturer, as an academic. Uh, so uh, to other alumni and to put the future students, I say, you know, it is, Every situation is the best you, you can make out of it. And I took advantage of every opportunity I could. As an alumni, do you have any advice for future or continuing students? My advice is to really uh, absorb and gather as much knowledge and experience that the university can offer you. And learn as much as you can from those around you. There are some amazing leaders on campus and faculty who are committed to seeing you successful. So um, the fact that I'm a product of that. I became successful in becoming a professor and being able to write the book. This book is a, uh, it's an inspirational piece of work because you get a moment to go into the past 
you know, go into this era of the 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and so forth, and you get to learn how things came to be, like the door, the original dorms, and how, you know, Tolkien's names from Lord of the Rings, you know, um, were connected to the naming of these buildings. And so these are just, that's just a small example, but um, the book has so much, uh, many stories and voices of the past that it can connect you, whether it's from on the jazz festival or whether it's the, the, the Stern Library or uh, whether it's FACT, the program, or whether it's the birth of the Runner newspaper. There are, there are just so many untapped opportunities to learn more about these groups and to really appreciate the legacy that CSUB has left us for 50 years. Is, is, it, is it done? No. There's so much more to be accomplished, and I can't wait to see what the next 50 years will be like. This video has been made by the efforts of the Historical Research Center in the Walter Stern Library. Special thanks to Dean Kurt Asher, archivist Chris Livingston, and video editor Donato Cruz. Thank you.